off into tonight and tomorrow as well, but... Idiot! I suppose you told him that Gunther and I were lovers, too, practically man and wife. I said nothing of the sort. Anyway, how could I when most of that is in your imagination? This may come as a blow, Nora, but Gunther would have never married you. Don't you dare say that to me. I know better. Now, this better not get back to the Kavanaugh's. That's all I care about. They'd be dare say that to me. I know better. All right, if you say so, Nora. Now, this better not get back to the Kavanaugh's. That's all I care about. They'd better not find out about me and Gunther. Oh, of course. They might suspect that you don't have their best interests at heart. Now, that would never do, would it? You only knew. Oh, I know, Nora. When it comes to troublemaking, you get the grand prize. The grand prize for me will be to see that marriage on the rocks. And I'm going to drive a wedge right in the middle of that blissful little relationship. You wait and see if I don't. I came to tend the sick, of course. Well, thanks, They but... told me you got a hospital. Sorry I wasn't able to come over and uh, bail you out. Yeah, well, you can help me right now by getting out of here. What? You mean you have no words of welcome for an old friend who's come to divert and entertain you with uh, tales of mystery and intrigue? I'm sorry, Calvin. I'm just not in the mood for stories right now. Uh, uh... Okay, okay, have it your own way. All I wanted to do was um, see how you were feeling and um, fill you in all about the uh, bloodstained shirt. Hey, but if you're not interested, it's okay. What? Hey, Calvin, wait a minute. Come back here. Come on in. What is that you're popping? Aspirin. You sure you're okay? I'm fine. I just have a slight fever. I'll be okay pretty soon. Okay, will you go on with this and tell me what happened? Okay, anyway. The uh, surprise party at Sid's Tavern tonight turned out to be quite a fiasco. Oh, really? Yeah, look. Mike and Cliff laid the whole thing out for Raven, all about the two watches and Sky's possible involvement, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, she didn't buy it for a minute. She stormed out of the place in a blind rage, screaming slander and cursing everybody in the room. Calvin, I really didn't think that setup was going to net Gavin much help. Yeah, well... I still think it was worth a try. Yeah, well, I don't understand what all of this has to do with a bloodstained shirt. Patience, patience, I am getting to that. Anyway, I got this brainstorm, see? That we should go over to uh, the dance studio with Gavin, and he should show us exactly what happened the night that Gunther got killed. Well, what did you think that would do? Well, I'm getting to that, okay? So anyway... You know that uh, this guy, Jim Dietrichson's got this acting school over there. So he played Gunther, Gavin played himself, and they danced around a little bit. Finally, they got to the point where the gun was actually fired. Bang! Dietrichson falls on the floor and lays there for a minute. Then Gavin turns him over, and he's got red blood stains all over his shirt. What? They use something called a, a blood bag. They put fake blood in this little rubber pouch, and when you press the spot, you get a realistic-looking blood stain. Now, how's that for a piece of theater magic? Get it? Calvin, I'm sure this is really a fascinating story, but maybe when I'm not feeling so miserable, I'll be able to give it some serious thought. Right now, I'm lost. You know, you do look really awful. You must have a fever. I better call the doctor. Hey, no, that's not necessary at all. Look, it's my own damn fault, and I... I guess I did something pretty stupid. Oh, so what's different from your usual frame of mind? I think I'll get a refill. What was it this time? Well, instead of coming home and going to bed like the doctor told me, I decided to pay somebody a little visit. Ah, uh, don't tell me. Let me guess. This is Raven Whitney. Yes, that's right. And we had a very interesting conversation about Bobby Gerard. Bobby Gerard? Yeah. Bobby Gerard. It was dreadful. It was just dreadful, and it was such a shock because she planned the whole thing. Geraldine masterminded the whole thing. It's incredible. And then we got 
to Sid's cafe and all those people were standing around there like a bunch of vultures. The nerve of them. You know, I I think I may just end up suing them. Or maybe Anne and I'll end up having that smug DA thrown out of his cushy job. Those stupid people. They were all standing around judging like it was some sort of a kangaroo court. And they were making dreadful accusations about you. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Don't you worry, baby. They'll get theirs. I'm going to see to that. There are ways, you know. And the worst part of it is that Geraldine is in cahoots with them. Yeah, dear, sweet, lovable old Geraldine. And then I got home and Damien Tyler was here. What's that? Um, when I got to the house, he was waiting here for me. Again? What did he want this time? Skylar, you know what? He was asking questions about Bobby Gerard. And he said that she wasn't really here to rob us, that she was trying to help Gavin Wiley. And then that's why she came here to the house to snoop. Well, yeah, yeah I wouldn't be surprised if she was a, a plant from the cops. Or from the DA's office, maybe. You know, they'll stop at nothing to get Wiley off. I think we should forget about the whole thing. No, no, I'm not going to forget about it. I'm going to get revenge, baby. You'll see. Don't no, be no, worried. No, no, no. Please don't make a fuss. I just want to forget about all of them and everything. And I want to go to Switzerland. And I want to see the Alps. And I want to breathe that fresh, wonderful air. And just maybe I'll never, never, never come home again. symptoms. Jinx, I can't hear you. Somebody's house. Yes, somebody's house. He went to the Whitney house, didn't he? 
Gillen, look, all he wanted to do was say bon voyage. Hey, bon voyage. Are they going somewhere? Yeah, they're uh, going to Europe on a second honeymoon or something. As a matter of fact, Tyler says they'll probably be gone all winter. And so he thought it was so important to say goodbye to them that he disobeyed doctor's orders? Yeah, well, the funny thing is that they weren't even there when he got there, so the whole thing was for nothing. I don't know, last time I saw him, he looked like he was running a pretty high fever to me. Calvin, why is it some of the brightest people I know are always dumb in two areas, their own health and women? Yes, Mallory. Uh, Derek, it's Miles. Miles? You're up awfully late. <laughs> well, I did not plan it that way. Listen, I just took a chance I might still find you at your desk. You know, if you'd called me ten minutes from now, you wouldn't have found me here. Well, then maybe my timing is perfect. Listen, I have a favor to ask of you. It's about Jinx Avery. Jinx? No, wait, what about her? She's not sick again. No, it's nothing physical. I mean, no fading spells or anything like that. She has had another kind of a fall, this time in spirits. No, what do, what do you mean? Listen, I know that you've been seeing her now and then, right? Yes, yeah, sure, I have seen her. Well, otherwise I would not have presumed. Look, she uh, seems to be depressed, seriously depressed. What, did she call you up to tell you this? Yes, I don't think she would have unless the problem were extreme. Miles, what is the problem? What's, what's put her in this state? Well, I suppose it's career problems, mostly. I'm sure she's talked to you about it. Oh, yes, she has talked about this, but, but you think there's something I can do? Should I call her? Well, I think it probably would have to go a little bit further than that. She, she needs somebody to hold her hand, to talk to her, to make her feel like she's not alone. I understand that. But I realize this is a tremendous imposition. No, it's not an imposition at all. As a matter of fact, I'm very glad that you called. In other words, you will go see her. Yes, I'm just going to put a sweater on now, and I'll go right over to see her. Oh, thank you very much. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye. Calvin, we're finished with this stuff. Look, i gotta, I got to change. i got to go see a sick friend. It's fine by me. As a matter of fact, I was just thinking about the same thing. Ciao. Ciao. for than anything I could have prescribed. Yes, but you are the only one that she can talk to about her situation. I know, that's the point. Derek doesn't know. He won't be a reminder to her. He will represent life. And love? Well, that's something she needs very much right now. Only medicine is going to do her any good. Oh, yes, I suppose so. But I just wonder if Derek is the solution.
stop thinking about what I just did. You didn't do anything. Oh, yes, I did. I forced you to do something that went entirely against your grain. I know how you are with your patients. Nicole, I promise you, there's very little I would have been able to do for Jinx except just be with her. Did you want to be? No. Of course not. Are you sure Derek is going right over there? Yeah. Yeah, he didn't hesitate two seconds when I asked him to. Oh, it seems so unfair to him to invest all that emotion in somebody who's so sick. Maybe a... Maybe what? Well, I was just about to say that if things do start to get really serious between them, maybe I ought to have a little talk with Jinx. Just to urge her to share the truth with Derek. You think she'd agree to do that? I don't know. I think she'd lose him. I mean, not that he'd turn away from her, but it just wouldn't be the same. It couldn't be. Well, it wouldn't be easy. But it would have to be her decision. I certainly couldn't tell Derek. Nor could know. you. I know, I know, I know. Your promise. It's a promise that can't be broken, Nicole. Not ever. girls don't accept callers at this time. It must be 1.30 in the morning. Well, no, it's closer to 2. Oh, wait a minute. Miles called you. Yes. I see. He didn't want to come, so he sent a substitute. Now, look, Miles couldn't come, and I did want to come. I see. You don't have to accept the substitute. Uh, just close the door in my face. <sighs> no, come in. So good, so far. Miles called me and told me that you were feeling very depressed. And he knew that I was still at the office, but I knew that he was home in bed, still trying to get some sleep. He's got to be at the hospital very early in the morning. You wouldn't want him to fall asleep in the middle of curing a patient, would you? <laughs> but if you think I should, I'll, I'll go. No, no, please, come in. Uh, let me have your coat. Oh, I'm sorry I acted that way. Thanks. Really, it's just that I, I don't know, I was looking forward to seeing a doctor. I thought he could cheer me up, give me a magic pill or a, a shot, something to bring the rainbow back. No, I'm afraid in that regard I won't be much good. You don't have to worry about that. Listen, why don't uh, I, I get you a glass of wine? Would you like that? Well, yeah, I'd love a glass of wine. Oh, good. I'll join you. Maybe that will uh, make me feel a little better. Cheer me up. We could do a little talking. Well, that usually picks me up when I'm feeling depressed. Hmm. Do you uh, feel depressed often? I think I feel depressed too often, but that comes with the job. Or maybe that comes with living alone for too long. Well, why don't you uh, tell me a, a little about it? I mean, about your work, and I'm really interested to know what you think about when you're feeling down or depressed. You want to hear about police work? I do. <laughs> All right. In the morning, I start off with the criminals, and by the afternoon, I've worked up to the victims. And by the time I go home at night, it's very difficult not to believe the whole world is a cesspool. It's a cesspool. It's a tough struggle not to become cynical or bitter or unfeeling. Well, I could never see you that way. <laughs> believe me, I have been, and that's why I'm still single. But look, I uh, came over to cheer you up, not depress you. Oh, no, you're not. Please, please, keep talking. You have no idea how much it's helping. Well, I think the point of what I was trying to say is that, sure, everybody knows a policeman's work is hazardous, but I think the real hazard is probably to a policeman's emotions. Uh, dealing with the pain and the suffering. You can get through it. It's It's... It's a great work. And, uh, it seems like you like to work a lot. It may not be much of a life, but without my work, I wouldn't have any life. 
Well, I think that work's very important. As a matter of fact, that's why I've joined this um, group. Well, it's it's not a job, and, and it's not really much of a group either. Well, tell me about it. Come on. Well, it's a, a bunch of young hopefuls, you know, hoping for a, a bright future. But sometimes I think that they're really fooling themselves about the future. But then I think we uh, all do that sometimes. Well, you like them anyway? Well, yes, they seem very nice. As a matter of fact, one of them was just here a couple of hours ago. I don't know, he think he's the uh, matinee idol. Johnny Gentry, he calls himself. Uh, I don't think that's his real name. What was he doing here? Well, he just rang the doorbell and, I don't know, wanted to spend the evening with me. Just like that? Yes. <laughs> I get the feeling that most women just usually fall at his feet at the mere invitation. Well, he didn't force himself on you, did he? No, no, he didn't, no. Just put down your badge, Chief. I think he thought he was doing me a favor. That's show business. Yeah, well, maybe he can deal with me the next time he comes around here. Oh, well, now, settle down. Don't be so indignant. I mean, this is hardly the first time that uh, I've been propositioned. How'd you get rid of him? Oh, very easy. I just told him that uh, I never sleep with men I don't like. And I don't like men I don't know. And he was very nice about it. Well, it doesn't make me like him very much. You're getting very angry. Yes. And uh, a little resentful. Yes. And uh, maybe a little jealous. Yes. Well, you don't have to worry. Because um, I feel like I know you, Derek Mallory. you a dozen times. I thought you were drunk or dead in here. I'm not dead yet, Calvin. <laughs> you know, you really are crazy, you know, that I got a good mind to get on the horn and call an ambulance. You do that and I'll deck you. Yeah, sure, tough guy. You gotta stand up first. Here, come on. I'll cover you up before you freeze to death. Oh, hey, don't worry about me. I'm gonna be just fine. <sighs> so... I saw Bobby Gerard in this room, Calvin. Now you really do need a hospital. You got the DTs. No, I, I wanted to ask her where she went after she left the Whitney Mansion. She could have gone anywhere, Tyler. I mean, she could have gone to Hoffman's Antique Jewelry if she'd made it there. Calvin, listen to me. I'm not crazy. Yeah, I know. You're just sick. <laughs> This is not just some crazy idea. Listen, it was Sky Whitney who drove Bobby Gerard into the woods and killed her. Tell me 
what really happened that night. <laughs> According to you, you already knew what happened. I mean, you kept repeating it over and over again. Calvin, what did I say? You said that you thought it was Sky Whitney who killed Bobby. For Pete's sake, Raven, come on, the plane leaves in two hours and you're still packing. I am unpacking because these dresses are going to get messed up in here. Well, shall I take these straight out to the car, oh, Mrs. Whitney? One more. Uh, three more upstairs, sir. Yes. You can take those out to the car, Spencer. Are you bringing your entire wardrobe to Switzerland with you? No, darling. I plan to buy a few things over there. Wait, th th there must be a dozen pieces of luggage out in the car already. Where are we going to sit? Well, you don't have to go, but I have to dress properly. How about these pieces? Oh, uh, yeah, well, if they'll fit. Put them in there. Yes, sir. Oh, Spencer, wait a minute. I think this one's ready. Yes, ma'am. Baby, don't be mad at me. I have to take all those things because we might be there for months. Yeah, I know, but you're packing as if we're going to be there for a lifetime. Oh, Geraldine, you needn't do that. Spencer will take the luggage outside. It isn't one of yours, Scott. The suitcase is mine. Oh? Yes, you see, I'm leaving the house this morning, too. But I'm leaving for good. Now, Geraldine, there is no reason for this upset. You're simply overreacting. I distinctly recall being asked to leave this house. I was only obliging. I'm sure that Raven didn't mean what she said. She was feeling very upset herself. For damn good reason. Well, you must understand how she was feeling, Geraldine. I mean, the idea of all these people ganging up against her husband. I was rather uh, surprised myself. Then you'll be equally glad that I'll be out of the house, Skyler. Then you won't have to give any thought to what happened that night at the Wiley Dance Studio. There, you see what I mean? She's saying the same things again. I'm sorry if you believe that I've been concealing something, Geraldine. I assure you it was all a misunderstanding. Perhaps. But I am quite convinced that you were not at all straightforward with the police, with me, or with your wife. And I don't want to hear any more of this because I heard enough of it at that stupid kangaroo court of yours. That was rather a cruel thing to do to my poor wife, wasn't it, Geraldine? He simply wanted Braven to hear the facts. The, the lies. The lies. I don't believe it's necessary to discuss this any further. But I want to assure you, Scott, I have never made a more difficult decision in my entire life. You are my nephew. My only flesh and blood relative in this entire world. Yes, that's true, isn't it? I honestly believe that you know more about this case than you're willing to admit. You lied about the Watchers. And I'm convinced that you lied. Because you were in the dance studio that night before the police arrived. Will you stop her? Because this is getting... Tell me ridiculous. something, Geraldine. If you believe that I was in the dance studio that night, do you also believe that I uh, hit Miles Kavanaugh on the head and knocked him unconscious? No, of course not. That's Could you true. believe that I would allow Gunther Wagner to bleed to death? Is that what you think? Skyler, I don't want to cover this ground anymore. I have said what I've had to say. I simply want you to know that I did it to help that poor young man. That poor young murderer, you mean. And I hope that he rots in jail for the rest of his life. Bye, Raven. Skylar, I hope you have a wonderful trip. I'll send someone for the rest of my things. each other, that it was going to be you and me, you and me against the world. Yeah, it seems like it's come down to that, doesn't it? I love you, Raven. And if you love me, you'll trust me. Do you love me, too? I'm sorry. 
Sorry about the short notice, Sonic, but Doc Fisher just couldn't make it. It's the least I can do after you took care of my emergency last night. Well, hey, you don't have to apologize to me about that. In fact, uh... You were saying? No, no. Well, yeah. In fact, maybe I should thank you for giving me the chance to go over and see Jinx again last night. I guess you must realize I like the girl. The thought had occurred to me, otherwise I wouldn't have called you. So it went all right, I, I uh, suppose uh, she got out of her depression? Yeah, I think she did. Good, I'm glad to hear it. Well, it took a little while. She uh, wanted to know all about me. I had to tell her how I work and what I do and my innermost thoughts. Hell, I told her things I wouldn't tell my psychiatrist, if I had a psychiatrist. Well, sometimes that's very good therapy, you know, talking like that, not only for the talk of it, for the listener. Now, Miles, I think I know what her problem is. You do? Yeah. And I think you were right. I think it's her work. This is acting business. She's wanted it so long and so hard, and it's just not happening fast enough. The hell, that would depress anybody. Yeah, I'm sure you're right. But she's joined a new, uh, well, the acting company that's taken over Gavin Wiley's old studio. Right, maybe that'll do her some good. I sure <laughs> hope so. Yes, come in. Oh, good morning. For heaven's sake, how are you? Hey. Hey. You silly half timing. Well, it's good to see you. You too. We were just uh, talking about you, as a matter of fact. Listen, I hope you're not too angry with me about last night. Oh, well, you should be angry at me. I mean, that was awful for me to call you in the middle of the night and cry on your shoulder. And then when Derek told me that you started rounds at 7.30, I felt awful. It's all right. Just finished them, as a matter of fact. Now I've got another medical chore to perform. Well, don't tell me that the chief needs a doctor. Well, he seems uh, quite healthy to me. <laughs> uh, I do need a doctor, but it's not for me personally. I need some forensic work done. Forensic? That sounds forbidding. Well, it may sound that way, but it's it's not really. But, Jinx, uh, you came a few hours early for lunch. Well, you told me to come early and that you would show me around the headquarters. Oh, yeah, I, I did. But I'm going to have to have somebody from the public relations department do that. I can't leave my desk now. Oh, well, that's fine. Miles, isn't this wonderful? I mean, the last time I was here, I was a lawbreaker. And now, I'm a sightseer. Well, yes, it is wonderful. It's also wonderful to see you in such good spirits. Well, that's thanks to you, Doc.
grave and the girl is dead. She was young and her life is gone. I told you I don't know what happened to her. You may have been the last one to have seen her. You may be the only one who can give us a clue about what might have happened to her. I don't want to give you any clues when I'm ready to go catch a plane in an hour. But something might occur to you, some little thing, something she said or someone she mentioned. Look, Raven, all I'm asking you to do is to let me know. Look, call me from Switzerland or London or Paris or Kathmandu or wherever you may go. Call me, collect. Will you do that for me, please? All right. But I just don't know what good it'll do. Who's that? Um, it's a girlfriend. Look, Harriet, I'll call you when I get back, okay? Bye-bye. Uh, did you get everything in? Uh, yeah, just barely. Uh, it's in the car, but I don't know whether that, there's going to be room in the airplane. I understand that there are other passengers in this flight. Yeah, well, don't worry. It'll all be all right. Okay. Um, so, are we ready to go? Yeah, just here. Here, I'll do that. All I got to do is I have to check the alarm system, go around, make sure that the windows and doors are locked and things like that. You will keep it going, sir. Uh, why don't you wait outside? I'll get it. anything about, well, about what happened last night? Well, I don't know. It was, it was his idea in the first place. Well, I think all he wanted you to do was to um, hold my hand. Look, what difference does it make? So what if he even knows? But you didn't tell him anything, did you? Of course I didn't tell him anything. What do you think I am? I'm a gentleman. And even if I wasn't a gentleman, believe me, Miles is gentleman enough for the two of us. Mm, yes, he strikes me that way. I don't think I know many men like him. Now, wait a minute. Have you included me in that? Oh, well, I think that you're wonderful <laughs> in your own way. I'm glad you think that. Oh, I do. Mm. Oh. oh, excuse me, Chief. You told me to come right in. Look, I'll... I'll it's all right, back. Calvin. Come in. Come in. Uh, this is Miss Avery. This is one of my officers, Calvin Stoner. Well, it's nice to meet you. Oh, likewise. Miss Avery was just uh, going to wait for me outside. Oh, yes. Uh, the reservations are for 12.15. I'll be ready. Okay. Bye. Nice to meet you. You too. Come on in, Stoner. Uh, Anderson said uh, you were two hours late. What happened? Hey, I'm afraid it was our pal, Tyler. <clears throat> you went to see him last night, didn't you? Yeah, and it's a good thing I did, too. He was trying to run some kind of a record fever. I tried to talk the guy into going back to the hospital, but uh, you know how stubborn he is. What are we going to have to do? Tie that guy into the bed? It's okay. He's all right now. I sort of camped out there last night, and the fever was broken this morning. He says he'll take it easy until he's recovered. No, I'm going to have to chew him out next time I see him. There's no reason for one of my officers to be taking such poor care of himself. I want to thank you for taking care of him. No, no sweat. But uh, there is one thing I want to mention to you, Chief. Uh, Damien blames this on the fever, and I suppose that might have something to do with it, but I think he believes this new theory of his. Wait a minute. What new theory? It's about the Bobby Gerard case. Tyler believes that Skylar Whitney killed her. For what reason? For the same reason he switched the two pocket watches. Uh, I don't understand how those two relate. Look. Barbara Gerard was not at the Whitney household for her health. I mean, she went there to find that second watch, to prove that Skye was a liar. She thought that was the, the best way she had of helping Gavin. And? Well, Tyler thinks that she got too close to the truth, and that Skyler Whitney knew how close she was, and that he took her for a ride. belongs to Bobby Gerard. Well, uh, maybe, maybe Bobby lost it or left it I here. Or I don't know. I found it under the front seat of the car. Well, then you must be mistaken. It's obviously not Bobby's. Oh, uh, there's been other else. women in the car. I don't know. Maybe Spencer had somebody joyriding. It's a little Bobby's shoe. I know it's Bobby's shoe. That means she's been in our car. Raven, we have got one hour before our flight leaves. It's an international flight. It takes time to get the ready. The police told me if there was anything unusual about Bobby that I remembered, I should call them, and I think that this is a little unusual. 
What are you doing? It'll only take a few minutes. No, you're not. If we take one minute now, I am canceling the whole damn trip. Skyler! If we don't leave now, we don't leave. All right. Then I'll call from here. We won't have time. It's got to be at Harrison's before 5 o'clock, got it? Yes, sir. And I think that, oh, yeah, there is one thing that you ought to know about. Uh, Mrs. Saxon is not going to be uh, staying at the residence any longer. For how long, sir? Permanent, it seems. Uh, but uh, that's going to cause a bit of a problem. Since you wanted to take some time off next week while well, we're gone, uh, you're going to have to find a caretaker or someone to look after the house. Well, don't worry about a thing, Mr. Whitney. I will take care of it. Yeah, I'm sure you will, Spencer. I'm sure you will. Uh, well, listen, there's no point in you hanging around here. Why don't you go home to the house and make sure that everything's taken care of there. Yes, sir. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Whitney. I hope you have a wonderful trip. Thank you, Spencer. Raven. Spencer is asleep. Bye, Spencer. Say, um, baby, you're a million miles away. It's like you're in Switzerland already. What's up? Something on my mind. Still brooding about Geraldine, huh? Well, look, I know that she was a wonderful woman and a good companion for you and everything like that, but uh, frankly, in my opinion, she seems to have been spending a lot of time meddling lately. In I'm not that. really thinking about Geraldine. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about Bobby's shoe. Why was it in the car? I thought that we agreed. That I just we think that I should have called the police because it seems like it's very important. Raven. If you had called the police, we would have been delayed. And we wouldn't have been delayed by a couple of hours. We would have been delayed days or maybe weeks. Do you want that? No. No. Neither do I. Now, please forget about Bobby's shoe. I have. Let's go. Something that you told me yesterday. Something about a bloodstained shirt. <laughs> you 
You must have really been out of it. And all that time, I thought I was getting through to you. Well, actually, I was so feverish, I really couldn't understand what you were talking about. But I remember you said something about Gavin's old studio. Right. Gavin and Jody and I went over to uh, his old studio to sort of um, reenact Gun to Shoot. Yeah, I remember that much. Well, now, there's this guy, Jim Dietrichson, who's running the uh, acting school there now. So he decided he would play the part of Gun. What happened? Well, he and Gavin got to the point when they were actually acting out the struggle over the gun, you know. Um, they were using a cap pistol, of course, uh, but the gun goes off. Bang. Dietrichson falls to the floor. Gavin turns him over, and the entire front of the shirt is covered in blood. It was fake, of course, but it looked absolutely authentic. Right? And Jim Dietrichson doesn't fool around, does he? Yeah, he did everything but uh, stop breathing. Look, fake gun, fake bullets, fake blood... How does it all tie in? Uh, look, my friend, uh, I think right now you're really not in the kind of shape where you ought to be thinking about much of anything. So why don't you just knock it off and get some rest? Oh, yeah, sure, Calvin, sure. Now, don't just say sure, Calvin, sure. I mean, really do it. You know, I just left the chief's office, and he gave me hell for being late, but that's nothing by comparison to what you're going to get for taking such lousy care of yourself. Okay, Calvin, okay, but... I'm just not going to be able to rest until I solve this riddle. What? No martini? Cool. Did everything work out all right? Oh, great. I got a postponement. Terrific. For what it's worth. The trial won't take place for two, three weeks. Pray for a miracle. Daily. Dee Dee, suppose I would introduce some evidence, oh, I don't know, about personal effects on the body and, and wind the conversation around to the watch. Cliff, you know there's no chance of that. There is no evidence. I know, but I gotta try something, anything. Well, one thing is for sure, you won't be able to get Skylar Whitney on the stand. He and his wife left for Switzerland today. No. Not too sure I'd want Skylar Whitney on the stand anyway. Why not? Okay, you be the jury, okay?